Warning. Anime out of context contains spoilers, explicit language, and general tomfoolery. Neither of our hosts are experts on any topic, and you should not take their opinions as such. Listen at your own discretion, and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Anime Out of Context, the show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And I learned the great maxim that some are born weeb, some achieve weebdom, and others have weebdom hoisted upon them. I'm Sean Rollins. I'm Remington Chase. Remington, remember how last week I said we were going to cover more currently airing series and how I was going to kind of space it out between the season and make things more, uh... Interesting, you know, topical. Are you just going completely against that? I kind of have to, yes. Oh, perfect. Uh, because we got a couple recommendations for an anime that is currently airing, but technically started airing near the beginning of last year. Okay. And it's still currently airing, and a lot of people are like, hey, give this a watch, give it a listen, I want to hear what you think about it. And okay. I'll be honest, Rem, I started watching it as soon as uh, it aired, because I was curious, you know, it seemed like something that would be... Right up my alley. Uh, because when it comes to anime, Remington, what do you think is my usual type of go-to anime? Really bad shonen. Okay, first of all, it's not... <laughs> it's not really bad all the time. I like really good shonen, but I do admit I do have my biases to some of the less than good shonen. Oh, uh, you contradict yourself with the concept of good shonen. And right after uh, it aired, I was like, okay, this seems like it'll, it'll be right up my alley. It's got a lot of those fun shonen elements I'm a fan of. Five minutes in, though, I realized this anime was going to be absolute uh, horse shite. Oh, boy. Okay, so we're just entering one that you hate. Uh, quite frankly, yes. Um, because... <laughs> <sighs> uh, Remington, I love shonen. I do with a passion because... A good shonen can really get your blood boiling, your heart pounding, the action, the adventure, the friendships you make in between. Uh, some of the comedy moments can be quite um, heartfelt and pure. And just the dramatic tension of fighting that next big bad evil has always resonated with me because, you know, I love my superhero stuff. I love my, you know, underdog versus great evil stories. You know, it's the kid in heart that really resonates with me when it comes to shonen anime. Uh, and I thought that's what this show was going to do for me, Rem. I really thought that. But after watching the first episode alone, my conclusion is it's just discount fairy tale. Oh, no! Yeah. Fairy tale was already really bad. Yeah, and the fact that I still have a major soft spot for fairy tale, uh, even though I know it's really, really bad, and uh, the series ending is coming up and I'm just getting more and more apprehensive because it, God, it's not a good ending. I read the manga, not a good ending. Don't be disappointed when you anime only folks see it though. But yeah, watching this anime, it tries to do everything that a good shonen should. You know, it tries to set up all those character tropes and interesting conflicts, world building, uh, power systems, things like that. But it does them in such a generic fashion that it feels like fairy tale, just discount, and... You f I, Sean, I feel like you have just described most shonen in my eyes. Not most shonen, you piece of garbage. I, I think your description applies to most of them. They set out with ambitious or interesting premises, and then everything falls apart. You get a bland bitch protagonist, you have subpar world building at best, you have different magical systems that are rarely, and when they are poorly explained, the characters have very few actual relationships with one another, and the ones that exist don't feel very authentic, and then, as they continue with a co relatively contrived plot, you just wonder when you get to finish and if it's going to end before you kill yourself. That's not all shonen. Just most. I would even say most. There's I would. <laughs> <laughs> I've shown you some really top tier shonen on this show, Remington. Last week alone, uh, Slime. Come on, man. That's a great freaking shonen. That was more satire than shonen, though. It had shonen elements for sure, but it is not your traditional shonen. It ticks every single shonen box out there. Basically, the anime we're talking about this week is the 
kind of the opposite of what Slime did, because Slime took every shonen element and made it interesting and fun and enjoyable, whereas this one takes every single shonen trope out there and then kind of boils it down to the bare basics, and that's about all you can say about it. And oh my god, it's annoying. Oh, so we're just watching Fairy Tale again. I'd rather watch Fairy Tale than this. Oh, so we're just watching Attack on Titan again. I'd rather watch Attack on Titan than this. Oh, so we're just watching Sword Art Online again. I'd rather watch Sword Art Online than this. Good god! Not because uh, it's worse than Sword Art Online, but because at least I have fun tearing Sword Art Online apart and I can find new things to get angry about. Like, that's fun for me. Okay, well, what exactly are we delving into this week? Uh, Remington, we're going into an anime that is simply called Black Clover. Black Clover. Okay, never heard of it. it no, it's, it's new as of last year, uh, roundabout. It's... It's a problem child, is what I'd call it. Oh boy, another week of problem children. Yeah. There's a lot of really popular anime YouTubers out there who have made videos about Black Clover and how it's... It does everything shonen should do, but wrong. Okay, like, then maybe I'll like it. Mmm. I'm optimistic. If it bastardizes shonen, then I think there's a chance. The thing is, Remington, it tries to be a good shonen. Uh, don't so they all. It w if you enjoy this anime, I will be surprised. I'll be shocked. I'll be surprised. And for those of you who are fans of Black Clover, that's okay. That's fine. Uh, I've read forum posts. I've scoured the subreddits. I've watched really more of this show than I should have given it credit to. I am currently on episode 33. 33? That's way too many episodes. Uh, there are currently 66 episodes. What in the fuck? Yeah, it's, uh, oof. How many seasons? Technically, this is the first season. No! Yeah, the thing about Black Clover is it's trying to be an old school shonen. And we uh... haven't really covered much old school shonen. The closest thing we've gotten is Fist of the North Star, but... Oof. Uh, it does nothing really similar to Fist of the North Star. You might find some comparisons, but uh, y you'll be hard-pressed to draw, like, correct parallels to it. Okay, so what is Black Clover? Black Clover is discount fairy tale. The basic synopsis is this. In a world where magic is everything, Asta and Yuno are both found abandoned at a church on the same day. Coincidental, isn't it? You know. What I mean? it, oh, it just happens to yeah. happen. They're not related, by the way. Uh... <laughs> Oof. And while Yuno is gifted with profound magical power, Asta is the only one in this world without any. So you got... He's, he's the only one. Yeah, like, that's, that's first of all, that's my big problem, because I think in the anime it says itself that there are people that just don't have magic, but it, 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 apparently they're hyping him up as one of the only and how rare it is, which, I mean, fair... Someone not having magic in a world completely surrounded by magic makes sense. But at least in fairy tale, it was like a learned occupational thing. Like people could learn magic, but not everybody necessarily did. In this world, it sets it up as a thing that just everybody can do to varying extents. Which, you know, I'm all about civilizations and worlds that the general populace have power to some extent. And You can see something along these lines with Avatar... Where, uh, not to be confused, with Avatar. I'm talking, of course, about Avatar. Yes, of course, Avatar. Uh, so don't think about Avatar. Uh, this one is Avatar, but everyone has a bunch of abilities. But then there's a large subsection of people who do not have abilities. And they explore that through a lot of different interesting ways throughout the course of the show. And then, of course, throughout the spin-off show as well. Mm -hmm. And it's... A uh, genuinely interesting world building technique. How do these people with power interact with those without and how to and vice versa? It's a great concept, but in this world, everybody has power, so therefore the dynamic changes a bit. And the idea of a story about an individual who doesn't have power can be really interesting and see how he survives in this world when he wants to be one of those people with power. Is he primarily the main character? He is primarily the main character. That would be Asta, the okay. non powered one. Going to take a wild guess here and say that Asta, some words I would use to describe him are uh, he's going to be bland. Perhaps he's also going to be a bitch of a protagonist. No. No. No, it's the opposite problem, child, of protagonist for anime. Oh? He's going to be loud, he's going to be obnoxious, and he's going to be painfully stupid. Oh, okay. Like, 
painfully stupid. Does he also love food? Not as much as you'd think, Remington. Oh, a twist! No, he he just expounds his stupidity in other ways. It's the kind of stupidity that you just... It can be charming sometimes, the idea of having this really ignorant, low-wisdom-score-esque hero who just kind of blindly runs into things head-on and tackles things straightforward way, and people are charmed by his uh, general views on the world and his outlook on friendship and the like. You know, that can be charming. They try to do that with Asta, but it's hard to do anything with him because my god is he obnoxious does he have red as a general color scheme no oh man another twist it's all black uh, okay not much of a twist no not, not much of a twist <laughs> i got all. way too optimistic i mean the anime is called black clover my dude i guess forgive me for thinking there was going to be some symbolism yeah but the anime starts out trying to explain this world a bit and introduce us to our two main characters. It says two main characters, but it really primarily follows Asta, uh, being, you know, he's the uh, quote-unquote underdog without any magic. But he does oh, a twist. Oh, no. What's up, Remington? If they're trying to make him an underdog, then I got a hunch that it's going to do the thing that really annoys me in a crap ton of different shonen where it looks and it's like, wow, how can they possibly overcome these odds? They just do it. Boom, bam, done, finished. Similar to my problems with season one JoJo, where it was like, oh man, this is going to be really rough. All right, it's done. That's it. Uh, Thankfully, though, from what I've seen, he gets his ass kicked a lot. This already seems way better than most shonen you have showed me so far, Sean. Yes. Conceptually, it sounds good. Once you start watching it, you realize that it tries to combine all of these ideas of good shonen and matches them together in such a way that it's just, it doesn't resonate with you. Like, it doesn't feel like it has any heart. And I talk a lot about how anime and manga should be uh, viewed separately when it comes to reviewing them as forms of media. Because what an anime does with a manga conceptually can uh, drastically change and improve or, in some cases, destroy what the original content was supposed to be. Uh, this is definitely a case of the latter. A lot of people say that the manga is top-tier shonen stuff. But again, manga doesn't matter. And this anime is painful as fuck to watch. Primarily because of one glaring reason. Oh? Asta has the most annoying fucking voice on the face of the planet. <laughs> like, I thought I had an annoying voice, which of course was the perfect reason for me to get into an auditory-only medium. Exactly. But my god, it is painful to listen to Asta. After, after like 10 episodes, the grading doesn't hit you as hard. But every like 30 seconds, it's him screaming. Not screaming words or like passion yelling, it's just, ah! Ah! Over and over and over and over. After hearing you complain of all about Black Clover for part one, I'm feeling surprisingly optimistic. I was worried you'd say that. <laughs> but allow me to just finish the synopsis real quick because it's going to sound kind of familiar. Uh, at the age of 15, both receive grimoires, magic books that are the source of their true magic potential, because they could always kind of do little magic stuff, so I, what I would call cantrips. Okay. Uh, but they get grimoires that have spells within them that just kind of appear. Like okay, there's sure. a big library of them, and they get them at some point. Why not? Yeah, why not? And, uh, of course, he doesn't get a grimoire because he has no magic. Yeah, screw you, kid. You're a muggle. Until he does. Okay, screw you, kid. You're no longer a muggle. No, he's still a muggle. You're a, a, a magical muggle. Magical muggle. I think they opened uh, for Real Big Fish back in 98. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> but no, it, literally there's a conflict arises. He's uh, distressed over not having a grimoire. He doesn't quite understand why he doesn't. And then they just give him a book similar to how you gave your little brother a controller that wasn't plugged into the gaming console. And they're like, yeah, here's your little magic book. Just go ahead and do it. And he's like, neato. That would have been better, honestly. <laughs> no, it's literally he's backed into a corner and it appears out of nowhere and he gets, uh, gets a grimoire. Okay, Deus Ex grimoire. Exactly. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, though. This takes place in the Clover Kingdom, 
Ah, I get it. Yeah, and all the grimoires have three-leaf clovers on them. Okay, but yeah. his has a four-leaf clover. No, no, don't be ridiculous. Uh, You know, the one gifted with magic gets the four-leaf clover grimoire. Oh, my bad. Yeah, that, that makes way more sense. My apologies. But get this, Asta's grimoire, five leaves. Oh, my God, I hate it. Yep. Uh, but you think that gives him some amazing, cool, powerful, magical ability? Don't be ridiculous. He has the biggest shonen cop-out power that has been around since the 90s. He cancels out magic. Oh, of course. There you go. Which is a power that has been a cop-out for a lot of shonen battles for a, a long period of time to make them seem like an underdog. But when you think about it, cancellation is a pretty fucking powerful ability. You just permanent mirror force their asses. Fuck you. Well, that was a reference I didn't think you'd make. <laughs> it's one of the few Japanese things I almost sort of don't understand. Fair, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and his form of magic cancellation is in the form of, get this, a stupidly huge sword that he pulls from the book. Of course, because we needed a big sword. Yep. Uh, here's a picture of him. Oh, no. Yeah, like, uh, in this picture, he has what I assume are his most recent abilities, which uh, looks like a second sword and some kind of black wing. He's so edgy. Yeah. I haven't gotten to that part in the anime, uh, which I assume it happens after episode 33. Uh, but I'll tell you right now, at this point, I don't know if it's going to get any better. Loads of people have said, oh, man, if you stick with it, it gets better and better. But at this point, I'm agreeing with you. I don't think at this point it should really constitute as worth putting my time and effort into. Finally, Sean is coming around! With this anime in particular, yes. Uh, a lot of people say just read the manga instead, and I'm inclined to do that, considering the fact that I can't stand Asta's voice. Uh, and the animation is kind of horrible in a lot of places. They've only had w really one meaningful character, and then they kind of kill him off, but at the same time, they do the shonen cop-out of not actually killing him off. Okay, so what else do I need to know before we get started and watch some of this? Honestly, man, there's not much to say. It's just, it tries to be a uh, fancy old school shonen. Like, it does things in the vein of the big three of shonen, old, old school shonen, things like Naruto, for example. You know, where it starts off with a premise and a goal. Oh, his goal, by the way, is to be the Wizard King. Okay. Sound familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. It's almost like he wants to be the uh, Hokage, or he wants to be yeah. the uh, King of the Pirates, or he wants to be... Well, I suppose Ichigo didn't really have a uh, goal, but it... then again, that explains the show a lot. But no, y you get it. It's literally taking every single shonen trope, mashing them together, and just kind of... on the execution. Character development is non-existent for Asta or Yuno. Uh, because you know is the bland bitch protagonist. Oh, no. Yeah, that see the parallel there? He is yep. shitty with magic, so he has magic cancellation, and he's loud and obnoxious. Really good with magic. Edgy, bland, uh, doesn't say much. Uh, so it's just going to be the exact same tropes that I've been used to for ages. To our listeners, expect to hear very similar things that you have heard over the past year in my complaints, perhaps with even more added frustration, but there's a slight chance I'll be surprised. And I will say in its defense, I watched a couple breakdowns of some of the fights later on in the series, but if it takes this long to get to a really good, well-choreographed fight that is beautifully animated, which by the way, there's abhorrent use of CG in a lot of these scenes as well. Like, not for any of the major, major fights, but there's a scene with a crystal golem about halfway through where I am right now that just looks bad. Oof. And I'm sure the manga is fantastic for shonen fans, and I'm sure it probably gets better later on, but oof. Well, Sean, let's get into it. Let's go watch some episodes of Black Clover. <laughs> Sister, 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back after consuming a riveting three episodes of Black Clover. Remington, it's been a minute since I've seen you like this. How you feeling, man? Sean, I imagine we have a lot of fans who listen to me complain all about shonen especially, and I talk about how most shonen is repetitive, and it has far more tropes on average, and it's really annoying, and I dislike it greatly almost all of the time, and I'm sure that a significant portion of our viewers don't really understand why I view Shonen that way. If they watch Black Clover, they will understand how I see Shonen, because this has all of the worst elements of Shonen just amplified. So if you do not understand how I see Shonen, it's Black Clover. <laughs> so basically, you're just mirroring what I said in the first part, that it's literally the opposite of slime. 100%. It lacks any self-awareness. It lacks any heart. It lacks most pretty visuals, with very few exceptions. Yeah, no, there's one or two overarching uh, environment shots that are okay, and some interesting effects with the highlighting of the magical colors and whatnot. That's kind of pretty sometimes. Yeah. But overall... It, oof! Yeah, it just does not look good, and normally, since we just did three episodes, I would think that it's reasonable that we do a bit of a breakdown of the three episodes, but I'll be honest, hardly anything happens in those three episodes, so I think it would be best instead of looking at the very, very minimal amount of story that there was, and instead divide it up into certain elements and characters and traits about the show instead. So you want to do a more in-depth discussion of Shonen as opposed to just Black Clover in and of itself? Ideally. Yeah, because, you know, mm, there's a lot of problems with this show, Rem. It definitely tries to be a contender for the worst shonen I have ever seen, and oh boy, is that saying something. Really? You don't think it's a definitive worst for you? I don't know if it's definitive, but that's only because we've seen a lot that I hate, but... If I thought about it more, there is a decent chance that it would end up in that last place spot. I feel like it should end up in your last place spot, especially considering the time period that it is uh, coming out in. It started actually at the end of the fall season in 2017. Yeah, I feel like there's very little excuse for it to fall into all of the pitfalls that I feel like most people understand and have moved on from, and they're going to be a subset of individuals who say, well, no, it's trying to harken back to that classic shonen style, so all of those terrible flaws that we've moved on from, they're just trying to utilize that, to which... To those people, I say, you can mimic something old, but still not keep the terrible things about it. To make an analogy into a different realm, the realm of video games, you can take a game like Shovel Knight, for example, Sean. A game like Shovel Knight that tried to emulate that same 8-bit type style of classic games and tried to also emulate how they played and the ideas behind them, but refined them to an even greater degree. So it lost the pitfalls that they faced and it added everything that we now know makes a good video game. Black Clover could have done that with Classic Shonen, but instead it takes everything bad about Classic Shonen, and oh boy, that is a long list, Sean. And then it decides to take everything bad about modernity, and they just throw it together. So what you're saying is, Shield Knight is your waifu. Yeah, Shield Knight is my favorite anime, is the conclusion <laughs> of that. <laughs> but yeah, Remington, you kind of hit the nail on the head with that one. I said this was the opposite of slime in the first half because it really is. It's taking all of the bad tropes of shonen and amplifying them, which is not what you're supposed to do. And we know in this day and age, there are some really good shonen put out. And even in uh, the, the same year that this started, there was a really super good, amazing shonen that is still currently airing, and I cannot wait for season four. You guys know what I'm talking about. You know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, All Might. Oh, what? 
I don't understand. We'll get to an episode on it soon. Uh, that's a promise to you guys as well, because I want to talk about it as much as possible. But we need a minute, because he's going to have to watch a lot of it before I can uh, properly have him assess it. Oof. But at any rate, good anime that came out the exact same year and in the exact same time frame really bad like compared to this like it's like we have a perfect example of some good shonen anime that have come out in the past two years and then to have this come out alongside them it kind of takes away from everything a bit doesn't it 100 percent. there is no reason for black clover to exist because it it only exists through the tropes that it has. It has both types of awful shonen protagonists, both the loud and the annoying, combined with the super edgy and super quiet, right? And it has the worst versions of both of those. And it continues with those two trying to be important. All of the characters that are supposed to be bad guys, oh, you know they're bad guys because they don't have an ounce of redeeming quality within them in any way. There is no nuance, there is no detail or intricacy, and there aren't any details on the periphery. The world is one-dimensional. The only things that are ever happening are to the main characters, and the one relationship that should be built up quite powerfully, which is the relationship between Atsa and Yuno, is so weak, it's so pathetic. There's this one moment that was supposed to be super meaningful and important where Yuno also d declares Atsa as his rival, but it means nothing. You hate the show so much, you can't even pronounce the main character's name right. Uh, probably not, I don't give a shit. Asta. Asta, oh, Asta, okay. Yeah, because he's a bit of an ass, get it? Ha. Uh, I don't think that's the reason he was called that, but it's the reason I'm calling him that. It's, it's more fitting than anything else. But. It's not great. So we should break it down bit by bit, but as opposed to episode by episode, we should dissect the world and the characters individually. I think that's a good idea, Sean. Let's start with the uh, the strongest point of the show, I'd say, which is not saying much. Oh, no. The world itself. So the world itself, essentially, if you take fairy tale and if you take Harry Potter, which, as we know, is our favorite anime here mm -hmm. in the podcast. And a splash of Naruto. And a splash of Naruto. And then you combine them all, you taste it, and you're like, hmm, you know what this needs? Just shit, and you shit in the blender, and then you blend it up some more. <laughs> that is about the world that we have created with the Black Clover. A shit smoothie? Hey, whoa, whoa, not just a shit smoothie. That will be the predominant flavor, however, unfortunately. <laughs> the terrible thing about smoothies with shit in them, regardless of how much shit, that is going to be the dominating flavor. I mean, I guess... But I feel like your analogies are getting a little too blue for our, uh, you know, family-friendly comedy podcast. <laughs> yes, our very family-friendly podcast. This is a reminder. We do have a disclaimer along with that little E that says explicit. Yeah, because though we don't say as many explicit things as we could, sometimes, if you watched last week's episode, you, yeah. <laughs> but we have it for a reason. And... Yeah, the world itself is an interesting thing-ish. I mean, it's your stock standard magical fantasy society. You know, it does the same thing that fairy tales tries to do. A world wildly powered by magic, but still kind of has that semi-medieval theme around it. Because, you know, magic and medieval, that kind of goes hand in hand, you know? Yeah, and it's probably the strongest point, or at least one of them, but it's still a net negative overall. Yeah, because the most interesting thing is, uh, quite frankly, the biggest background piece in their hometown, which is the giant carcass of this big behemoth monster that was defeated by the Wizard King in the when the country was founded. Which, you know, that could be a very interesting setting device as well as lead to some interesting stuff plot wise maybe it gets resurrected in the future i don't know or maybe there's a secret about that creature or you know, all kinds of interesting plot points you could go through with that 
uh, but the most we get in the first three episodes and literally every episode after episode three is a synopsis of, hey, this was a thing. Wizard King killed it. Yep. And it definitely yeah. just had awkwardly placed exposition dumps throughout. There was a whole lot of telling, not a lot of showing, and the amount of showing was almost exclusively bad. So, Sean, what's the next point that we should discuss? Well, they don't really go too much into it uh, in the first three episodes because a uh, thing a lot of old school shonen like to do is they like to give you a little taste of it and then build off of that from episode to episode to episode so you can better understand the conflicts. And that is the magic system. And the magic system for this show is basic. Yeah, it's not super interesting. It's essentially just a worse magic system combined with JoJo's and Avatar The Last Airbender. And if you combine those and, once again, make it worse, then you got a decent idea of what it's going to look like. I'd say it's just discount fairy tale. Yeah, that also works. Because at least in fairy tale, the magic was a bunch of techniques and was learned through knowledge, right? They were proper quote unquote wizards, whereas these are more like sorcerers who have magic within them and gets unlocked by a book. Yeah, because that's the real thing that is displayed as the source of their magic is they can cast minor stuff based on their internal magic. But then at age 15, they get a grimoire that flies from the sky and lands in front of them. And within it are all the spells that they can cast that are more powerful than what they can do on their own. And as they get stronger, there gets more and more stuff put into it. And this is stuff I have learned over 33 episodes. It doesn't even explain any of this in the first three. Yeah, it just has not been a good magic system. And I've complained about many magic systems. This is just yet another one to throw into the pile. Mm hmm. And I mean, I like the idea of a book based magic system. I mean, it was done really well, pretty decently in this one anime that used to air on Cartoon Network a lot. I don't know if you remember it, but Zatch Bell. I don't know if I've ever heard of Zatch Bell. Basically, it's uh, like toddler Pokemon is what it's like. What the fuck? Wait a minute, Sean. Wait, was that the one with the, the yellow-haired character? Yeah, the yellow-haired character with, like, the lines on his mouth. That yeah, that, that was weird. I didn't like that. I didn't either. But it did that did the book thing better than this. Yeah? I can't remember. Is that still a thing? No, was that God, ever no. a thing? It was a thing. <laughs> it was not good by any imagination, but it was a thing. Let's do Zatch Bell one of these days, Sean. I think we might have to if I can <laughs> fucking find it. But God. Let's do a double feature of Zatch Bell and Code Lyoko. Oh, God. It'll be the greatest combo of what the fuck references that we'll ever have. Look, if anybody even remembers Zatch Bell that listens to this, uh, this show, I will be impressed. Like, I don't even know how it got over here in the first place. I just remember <laughs> I watched it a lot when I was younger and then it just got canceled out of the blue and I was sad for a minute and then I don't remember anything about oh, it. Oh, you're such a little weeb when you were young and now still. All right, what's the next thing we should talk about? Well, after briefly tearing apart the magic system, let's talk about, well, let's talk about one of the glaring obvious points, let's say. Let's say the two protagonists because they, they say there are two, but there's really one and a half is the dynamic, because throughout most of it, it's th Asta's uh, story-ish, and occasionally cut into you know. And, uh, Remington, if you had to predict how the story is going to go, knowing what you do about the show and the world, how do you think the s their stories are going to progress? You know is going to succeed the traditional route. He's going to get high marks on things. He's going to do quite well. Meanwhile, Asta will be very jealous of his rival, and he will succeed in major ways, though probably less frequent ways. So he will succeed on the things that matter, and sometimes he will succeed in amazingly triumphant fashion, but often he's going to be living and be jealous of the fact that he is in Yuno's shadow. You know, that would actually be a bit more interesting than what actually happens. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, there is a little bit of that, but... Shortly after episode four and five, uh, they join this group called the Magic Knights, and you got a big exposition dump about them in episode oh, yeah. three. 
I don't know if you remember anything about it, so I'm just going to re-paraphrase it for you. The idea is that the uh, country is ruled by a king, and adjacent to that king is the magic king. And the magic king it rules over all protection and warfare and such, and he has beneath him magic knights, which are divided into uh, basically Harry Potter houses. Yeah, there are, I believe, 13 divisions of magic knights. I don't remember the exact number, but I think it's 13. Kingdom because... Hearts? A little bit. Also a little bit of bleach, but, you know. They're stealing from every shonen thing on the face of the planet. Uh, There's just not a lick of originality. Uh, the only thing original is some of the character designs of the Magic Knight leaders, and they uh, and I say original because they look stupid as fuck. <laughs> Like there's literally a dude who has a uh, who has silver hair and a braid, uh, but you know how most people have their braids to like the side and the back. Yeah, his is just a braided bang straight down the middle. Okay, it's fucking atrocious to look at, and he's supposed to be this big, serious, edgy, uh, freaking Byakuya style character. Oof. Uh, and it, ooh, it's not good. As well as some other really mediocre character designs. Uh, it's besides the point. But there are these different Magic Knight organizations, and the next couple episodes are literally just them auditioning, basically. So, which, they set up, like, a tournament arc. You know, and you know how I love my tournament arcs. Tournament arcs are pretty great when done well. Yes. Uh, it only lasts one episode. That. That's not a tournament arc! It's an episode and a half, really, I suppose. Uh, where they literally have to pair off and fight each other. And at the end of it, 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 they just, the leaders of the group just look down and were like, All right, I'll take you, 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 you. Or they'll be like, oh, I'll offer you to join my group. They'll raise their hands and, and let whoever's down there choose which group they want to join. Okay. And you'll never guess what happens, Remington. D does does Yuno and Asta get chosen for the same group? Oh, of course not. Oh, what a twist! No, no, no. Uh, Yuno completes his bit, and every group raises their hand saying, I want him in mine. Oh, yep, yep. And, of course, he chooses the top-tier best group. Yep, numero uno, the number one, the best one. And then when it comes to Asta... Nobody does. Wow! Yeah. Until the very end when uh, the worst Magic Knight group is like uh, leader runs into him and is like, hmm, you know what? I actually like you. You're joining my group. <laughs> yeah, but of course. Why not? Deus Ex pity. Uh, and that actually kind of leads us into our kind of next biggest problem. Uh, we'll come back to the main characters, but the real big problem of this show is in the first fucking episode, Deus Ex Machina. Yeah, absolutely everything is just because, which is yet another thing that I've ranted a bunch about, especially with terrible shonen things happen just because. Why is the character doing that just because? Why does this happen? Because it's relevant to the plot. Why are they doing this instead of that? Because if they did another thing, then the plot wouldn't exist. Why isn't the big bad evil character just kill the main character because they really should have by now? Oh, just because. <laughs> it's so terrible. It's so annoying. And this hits it so many times we've only seen three episodes and in those three episodes we've had so many things without any motivation without any reason to happen without any justification and any time that it decides to explain something it doesn't do so in a very clever or well thought out manner well where it might foreshadow or it logically proceeds a course of actions to a reasonable conclusion no they will just exposition dump here is everything or here is a montage which is basically a slideshow of their adventures or hey they were kids once guys that's it it's so irritating and the biggest sin of all is the overuse of random ass expositional narrating. So often. Like, I'm okay with narration sometimes. Like, it can be used at the beginning or the end of an episode to highlight the qualities or recap some things. Uh, you know, next time on Dragon Ball Z. You know, everybody got hyped for that back in the day. Yeah. When you have random expositional narration in the middle as opposed to having it being presented to you in a natural way, whether it's being taught to the main characters or to anybody really and you just have narration instead it doesn't really work too well does it 
Not in the slightest. And when we're talking about narration, we quickly get to discussions about speaking itself, which very easily leads to a certain topic. The topic I want to save for last, Remington, because it's the biggest problem with the show. Of course. And we have to save the fun stuff for last, after all. Yeah, fun stuff. Yeah. And I have to ask, Remington, what do you think of the second worst deus ex machina in the show, aside from the expositional stuff? (laughs) His book appearing out of thin air right as he's about to snuff it. There would be so many more interesting ways to handle it, especially because, as it explains in episode three, the fifth of the clovers, uh, the fifth of the sides of the clover, it represents a demon, right? It represents a demon, which isn't fully explained. I'm sure that it'll sort of get explained, but it would be far more interesting if it were some evil Shinigami or if he had to make a very evil pact with it where the demon comes to him and says, ah, it's your time of need, where it does like almost a proper deus ex machina But instead of a god, it is a demon that says, I will save you and your friend. However, I know you don't have magic, but I'll let you access that. I'll let you touch upon it. However, then you can have an interesting twist. You can have an interesting side of things. They didn't go with that. It just shows up and then he wins and that's it. And don't worry about it. So what you're saying is, is you'd like him to be a warlock in a world of sorcerers. That would be far more interesting. Yeah. Having a not smart character make a very potentially threatening decision in order to save his friends and his loved ones. Where we've often seen this type of thing where you have the rival character who is feeling overshadowed by the main character so they will make a deal with the bad guy, right? And then the rival sort of turns evil for a while, uh, getting their superpowers and then they fight off. That's happened a few times. I thought you haven't seen things. Naruto. I'm familiar with Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, everyone is. Oh, Sasuke. And so we've seen that before, but it would be interesting if that happened to the main character. And then they're struggling with it. And that'd be a nice change of pace. But changing of pace is not what Black Clover is all about. No, no. You wanted a really nice, interesting, anti-hero-like story. And it would be especially interesting if the character is so unlike your standard anti-hero, where they are your very traditional hero, but they still have this very dark mark that they are still heavily influenced by. So you actually get, I don't know, nuance and detail, and you don't get a black or white story, and instead you find some shade of gray, because those are always more interesting, god damn it! You want more gray in your black clover? (sighs) About 50 shades. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that was low-hanging fruit, Remington. (laughs) Low-hanging. Like, I could have, like, kicked it with my foot and it would have fallen off the tree. That does lead me to one thing that it checks off on the Remington list. It didn't have fan service. Yet. Oh, shit. It doesn't have much, but there's literally a character who I think her entire purpose is just fan service. Is she one of the leaders? No. No, of course not. No, no, no. She's uh, one of the members of the Magic Knights that Asta eventually joins, uh, which, by the way, they're all color and animal named. Okay, cool. He joins the Black Bulls. I hate everything. Yeah. Because, you know, there wasn't enough black in this Black (sighs) Clover. But one of the characters is literally just, uh, she's a mage, right? Yeah. And she has the Magic Knight Tabard, which is literally just like a cloth, like short cloak that cuts off like right here and split down the middle. Okay. You know, like almost like a full cloak, just like someone did the, uh, like the, the bikini top cut on it. Basically. Yeah. So not really practical in any way. Nope. Uh, and she only ever wears like, it's either underwear or a bikini underneath, but I can never tell. That's literally all she ever wears. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, I tried to be optimistic. I tried to compliment it. I mean, it doesn't have blatant fan service all the time like a lot of uh, lesser shonen do, or I should say equal shonen. Uh, but it, mm, you're you're not getting away scotch-free, young man. Of course I'm not, of course. <laughs> all uh, right, let's move on. And, oof, the... Real big problem, Remington, aside from the world, aside from the magic, aside from the relationship between the two main characters, which you think would be so goddamn important, 
Fuck me, Asta is annoying. So annoying. When you were bemoaning how annoying he was and how annoying his voice was, I thought that you were over-exaggerating. Because, for example, you thought Umaru-chan was ridiculously annoying and I found it decently charming. And you were super annoyed by Forest Fairy 5, but I found it decently charming, albeit also terrible. And so I thought maybe this is just one of the things that Sean is overly sensitive about and he's overly annoyed, even though he shouldn't be, but oh no. I felt I was justified in those, but that's besides the point. Yeah, uh, mm. This has reached so far lower. I have been annoyed by many main characters, but this is a possible contender for the worst protagonist we have ever had and we've had a lot of bad ones i don't know if it would top the list but it is going to be a contender because he ends every single sentence while screaming i could probably count on my hands the number of lines that he wasn't yelling even in his own inner monologue he is yelling everything that he does he repeats himself often he says nothing of interest he has the same ideas presented in the exact same ways none of them are new none of them are interesting all of them are executed poorly all of his actions are either nonsensical or even when they have any type of justification they're exactly where you think they're going to go and so over the top in the absolute worst way my question for you remington is is why don't you just end your sentences with uh you know a little bit of thought a little bit of nuance a little bit of ah over and over again because that, that's all he does folks that's all he does it's frankly amazing to me how they repeated that Time and time and time again. If you were to play a drinking game where you drink every time he screams, you're dead after the first episode. There's no hope. You're gone. If you turned that to shots, you'd be dead after the first three minutes. Your liver just would not exist. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It barely exists for me as is. Because <laughs> like I said, folks, I've watched 33 episodes of this. Oof. And uh, I have a high tolerance for anime bullshit. And people kept saying, oh, it gets much better. Oh, you've got to stick with it. It gets better. Read the manga as well. That gets good, too. After 33 episodes, they've only had really one semi-meaningful character interaction where a guy nearly dies. Uh, and I thought they actually did kill him. And I was like, oh, if they actually kill him, that'll be interesting. But of course not. Of course they didn't. Why would they? No. And, Sean... This has been a point that I've expressed, but in your case, if you can watch 10 to 15 hours of a show and it has not gotten better, there is other media out there. Folks, there are better shows and, dare I say, there are better anime. Dare I say, there are better shonen out there. So even if you are looking for shonen, which I would recommend against... There are so many better options. This is potentially the single worst shonen that I have ever seen. And I have seen some abysmal shonen on this podcast. Don't watch this. It's not worth it. Don't do it. That being said, we did actually get this as a recommendation, Remington. Oh, I hope they didn't think I would enjoy it. Oh, no, they said you would hate it. Oh, they were right. Yeah, no, they said uh, that you would absolutely despise it, and they think it would be funny to hear what your thoughts were on it. Oh, well, I hope they're pleased. Then who did that come from, Sean? Uh, it came from two people, actually. Okay. And I'm sure many others, but those were the only two I could find. Uh, we have one from Taylor and one from Christine. Well, uh, Taylor, uh, Christine, thank you for the recommendation. And, uh, hopefully you enjoyed all of my thoughts about Black Clover. Yeah, no, and hilariously enough, uh, Taylor seems to think that I might like it because I'm shown in trash. But even I have my limits, my dude. Oh. But, that being said, Black Clover, man oh man. If it does get better eventually, great. And if you're curious enough to check it out, don't watch the anime. Just don't. Read the manga. Like, this is one of those few times where if you're at all curious about it, don't subject your ears to the torment that is Asta! Because literally that's all you'll ever hear. 
And after a while, you can tune it out, but it took a long-ass time for me to be able to do that because he does not have any proper character growth at all until just barely the point where I am where the character nearly dies. Which, by the way, the only reason it's kind of meaningful is because I thought they actually killed him. They didn't. And it's the only care And uh, the real problem is it's the only reason the guy and Asta have a connection is because they happen to meet each other once. Neat. Yeah, it's not great. So all in all, Black Clover, not a good show, Remington? You don't want to watch? Mm, no. No? You don't You don't think it's going to be your next, uh, next big shonen favorite after Slime? Oh, God, no. What would you rather do than watch Black Clover? Instead of watching Black Clover, Sean, I would rather do just about anything. You know what? Let's keep it. Let's keep it anime themed, Sean. I would rather rewatch season one of Sword Art Online than watch Black Clover. I would rather dress up as an anime magical girl than watch more Black Clover. I would rather watch. Almost anything. I'd rather watch an episode of Monster Musume than watch any more Black Clover. Holy shit, Remington. It threw me into the abyss, and maybe I'm speaking out of emotion and frustration because it's recent, but I am scarred right now. I am hurt right now, and I can't think properly right now, Sean. I mean, you are quite literally fuming. Like, it is hot in this tiny little uh, recording area, but at the same time, you should not be steaming out of the ears, and fire should not be in your eyes, and you should not be trying to curse me to the depths of hell. I'm a broken man. But that's okay, Remington, because while this was one of the worst things you've ever seen, think of all the good stuff I've shown you this month. It wasn't worth it. None of it could ever be worth it. That being said, Remington, I have one last thing I need to ask you. Would you like to go watch some more Black Clover? You can fuck off, Sean. Maybe I will. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the torment that is Really Bad Shonen and Remington's pain and suffering alongside it, feel free to leave a review on whatever platform you listen to us on, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, and honestly, the best way for us to grow is word of mouth. And if you would like to contact us directly, whether it is for a comment, question, feedback, or a recommendation, then you can either tweet at us at AnimeConPod, or you can send an email over on to AnimeOutOfContext at gmail.com. Once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I am... I'm just gonna go... Ah! 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 